Hey everybody, welcome. That's a new video about um, the Golem crowd unit and the difference with the scales. So crowd unit and scales are two different meanings. And um, the idea in this video will be to explain why there are two different values and how you should handle those. So first, uh, let's talk about the crowd units. So the crowd unit is going to be set up through the crowd manager. Please notice that you can also set it up for the whole studio using an environment variable. And by default, it's set up to meters. Um, if we expand the values, you'll see that you can pick in those um, various predefined values. So you're going to have meters, decimeters, centimeter, millimeter. So um, the classic linear unit system. And then you got the empiric um, system here, inch, foot, and yards. So by default, it's set to meter. Uh, it's more or less because we are a French company and we used to work mostly with French studios in the beginning. And um, those guys were mostly using meters at the time. So having a unit of meters means that we are going to consider like a grid here is going to be one meter. And based on this value, every single acceleration, speed, distance, mass will be defined based on this so here's um just a quick uh, description so here uh, just a quick uh, overview of what i'm having in my scene i have three different types there uh, which are set up with a scale of one my manager has a scale of one and what i'll do is i'm going to populate my scene so let's pump it up completely and here my distance is going to be expressed in meters so if i ask that I want a distance between characters of one, it will be of one meter. And obviously I need this to be bigger because my slot is already more than one meter there. So let's provide maybe two. Two, now you can see that um, the distance between the slots, between the center of the slot is two grid units, right? Because we're gonna consider that one um, grid unit here is one meter. So let's change the unit and let's switch it to, let's say, decimeter. So now we're going to consider that one grid unit is one decimeter. So one meter is going to be 10 units, right? So let's recreate my grid from scratch. So first you can see that the locator for the grid is bigger. But the size of the slots is the same because my character that I'm using is has been made as a meter character. But I may want to consider that even if my scene is in decimeters, maybe I'm going to handle, I don't know, um, really small characters. Maybe it's a science fiction movie where all the characters are super small. So you could have like a decimeter environment with some small characters. No big issues with that. And here, if I set up my distance of two, so now the distance is going to be two meters. So it's still two meters. It was two or two meters in my previous example before, but now two meters has a different meaning, right? So now my characters, the distance between my characters is 20 grid. So it means that if you do an environment in centimeters, meters, decimeters, whatever, you always want to put the same values here. If you put the same values here, you always end up with the same simulation. So let's imagine that my characters are 10 times bigger. So let's change the scale of all those guys. By the way, um, I'm doing it here per character, but um, if I wanted, I could have done it through the manager as well. So there's an entity scale here. So if I put 10 here, it will scale all the entity types here. So now if I set up my characters with the um, uh, scale of 10, I've got the same repartition than what I had before when I was using meters. So keep in mind that here, the unit has to be defined based on your environment. We don't care about the character scale or the size that we modeled at. We don't care about the motions and the size they've been captured at. We really care about what's your environment and it's really important that you set it up properly and that your environment is aligned with one of those values here so make sure that you're correct from the first step okay so what about characters now let's set it up everything to one 
I was I was saying earlier here I could also have set it up um, as a scale of 10 here and all my characters will have been scaled properly the same way so what does that mean in terms of um, you know the character scales let's set up my distance of zero so it may happen that you got a decimeter environment but you got small characters or maybe you got giant characters so we can assume uh, and also another option is that you got a decimeter um, environment but your characters have been modeled into another unit so it's not a problem for us but the thing is we can't assume what's the scale of your character how you want to use it what's the final size of your character in your final environment so that's going to be your duty once the unit is set up to align this properly with your environment here your environment is set it up in decimeters so you may have an environment which is really big something like this Maybe it's been scanned or whatever. And obviously, maybe um, if you want your characters to be normal human size, they're not big enough to represent the characters in that scene. So you need to scale them. You got different ways to scale the characters. So as I was saying, you got a way into the manager, which will scale the slots there. Um, you got controls into the entity types if you want to set up different scales per character. And you also have a scaling um, value into the crowd field which is probably not really relevant here. It's more or less attached to the manager um, because the crowd field, it's too late for it to be taken into account in the population tool. Now that you've done that, you can see that even if my characters were super small, that's the actual size of the character, now it appears 10 times bigger than what I had and it is aligned with my environment. Let's say I'm, I need to have giants. I can go into my manager here and say, wow, those guys are three times bigger than a regular character and now you've got oh, obviously I need to replace and now you've got three times bigger characters than what you had before what about motion well we don't care about motion here the thing is um, all the motions whatever the scales they've been captured at so here that animation has been captured in centimeters we can see that it has 135 units uh, of translation so that's probably going to be centimeters here we don't really care about those because when that motion is going to be replayed, whatever the final size of the characters, it will be adapt to this. So let's say here my character is going to be 10 times smaller than the others. Well, maybe not 10 times, but let's say half. So we can still um, see it. Replace. You can see that the motion will be adapted to the size of that actual character. So you can see it's making smaller steps is moving um, slower than, than the others. So that's the difference between scale. So scale really influence the actual size of the characters and units influence how all the distance, acceler acceleration, speed uh, parameters will be taken into account into a final environment. When you set up a speed of one meters per second, something like this here, obviously don't want to multiply it whenever you switch to a decimeter environment or whenever you switch into a centimeter environment you always want to say that your speed is one meters per second but we need to know how much is a meter so how much is what's your one what's your units into your scene hope that makes sense and uh, see you into the next uh, video